I think we are recording. Awesome. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. It is 402 Hawaii time. I just first want to say thank you so much to Mr. Ben Rusk for being up late his time. Um, originally, I had it scheduled for six o'clock, but uh, you know, over where he is, it'll be like, what time would that be? Like 11 or midnight or something like that. And poor guy would might not be able to function and so i said hey let's do it at four o'clock and we'll do our best to get as many people as we can on during this time and i know it's a friday so thank you for being here we've got it streamed inside of our facebook page for our team but we also have it recorded so that people can replay because i feel like this information is super important i actually was on um coffee with curtis and for those of you who know or who were on yesterday's uh, zoom call um curtis actually did you know kind of a little training for us as well um, and I also, at the same time, wanted to make sure that um, Ben uh, was able to also have an opportunity to share um, as well, because he provided some really, really awesome information that I got to hear being on one of uh, Mr. Curtis's calls. And so I wanted him to come on because he's got some great news or great information that he put together. Um, and just the fact that he put some, uh, I'm going to mute people out. Okay. Just a second here. Um, but just the fact that he took the time to create this document, I thought it was super crazy, um, detailed and amazing. And it's not going to be quote unquote, the typical training with it's like the raw rust session or anything like that. So don't be expecting a motivational video to pop up, but this is educational. This is something that we all need. Um, this is really great, especially for those who are beginning, but also for those who may have been in the industry, but still not quite grasping how the gold and silver thing works. And so it's a really, really great layout. I am so honored to be able to have Ben Rusk, a bronze associate here with our company, 7K Metals, honored that he was able to say yes to having me come on uh, to be able to share this beautiful, wonderful uh, information with us. Thank you so much for being our guest, Ben. Why don't you go ahead and take it away, sir? All right. Thank you very much. And you're very welcome. Um, the document that you referred to has been revised. Um, I'm sure you'll be pleased with the results, but let me go ahead and share my screen for everybody to see. I had a feeling that you're probably going to update it before our Zoom today. <laughs> so are you able to see the screen? I can. Yes, I do. All right. So, <clears throat> you know, we're here today to really, you know, understand the value of gold and silver and how spot price and premiums affect that value. Um, <clears throat> I myself, along with some old time friends, have been looking for gold in the mountains for a long time. So we do clearly understand what it takes to dig up the ground, wash the rocks, and look for the gold. It is a time consuming and backbreaking process, trust me. But on a bigger scale, you'll see companies with open pit mines or hard rock mining, where they're chasing this gold vein. And you don't know which direction that's gonna go inside a mountain, so you just keep digging a tunnel deeper and deeper through solid rock to try to get at the gold. But even in this large open pit mine or the previous screen where people are just panning on the side of the river, this is all placer gold. And, and basically what that means is, it has broken free of its original casing. Most, most gold is found within an old lava tube that is filled with quartz and the gold traveled with the quartz and then the quartz cooled and trapped the gold in the quartz in that lava tube. And so it's the lava tubes that they're actually chasing. And even in the, you know, in the, Gold Rush and the other big equipment companies, they're just moving a lot of dirt. They do this for a week, you know, moving dirt, washing the, washing the rocks, all to come down to this little table and separate the black sands from the gold. And then they, this is a week's worth of cleanup for one of those big operation companies. It's a hundred ounces of gold. You know, we don't think that's a lot because it fits in that little pan, but that's $197,000 at today's spot price. And that's what they make for a week. Of course, the boss got to pay everybody out after he pays for the fuel, but, you know, they're making pretty good money. So 
the process to get money in your hand when you're a miner is you have to take your gold to an assayer. And this is a crucible where they separate the gold from the impurities. Because when that brick goes on that scale, that guy doesn't want to pay any more than he has to, and he wants it to be solid gold. And so that's where the miner gets paid spot price for their work. So that kind of put it into perspective of all the processes that people have to go through just to get the first cut of money that we call spot price. So now let's talk premiums. So with premiums, you have these COMEX bars, and basically they're coming from around the world. All those gold and silver assayers are producing these COMEX bars so that they can supply them to the mint. The mint then has to melt it down, create strips, and then punch out these blanks. Blank silver rounds are then put into a minting press, and that's how we get minted coins. These particular coins are just uh, silver rounds and gold rounds. This is what we call bullion. And of course, like with anything that comes out of a manufacturing process, there will be a premium put onto that, the weight of that precious metal to cover the minting process. So again, they got to melt it down, they got to create it, and, and they also have to create these dyes. Um, Jason had recently said on Monday night that there are only 200 coins produced from one die press, and then they have to change the die. So what are sovereign coins? Well, these are the coins that a country mints as currency. So that's why if, it's, if it has a face value of $1 or $50, that is, a, that is a coin of a sovereign nation. It's currency in that country and it's recognized worldwide. If you went anywhere with these coins, people would give you spot price right there on the spot. There, there, there would be no question because they know the integrity of the US Mint coins. And again, there is always a premium to be paid for anything that's manufactured. So the Mint puts a premium on these as well. So what about the graded coins? <clears throat> well, NGC charges fees to actually take the sovereign coin and look it over and grade it and then put it in the slab. So there's, uh, let's just say $34 worth of silver there. There's uh, $10 worth of shipping, uh, $40 worth of uh, labor to do the actual analysis. Uh, and then $10 for shipping it back, you know, so you're looking at $70, $80 right off the top just to grade a coin. So there may be, there, there is a premium on it after that. And there's other things that go into it, but that pretty much covers, you know, why there's a premium for these collectible coins. So when you're, when you're dealing with a wholesale company, that's, that's somebody that's dealing directly with the mint. It's not like they got it from somebody who got it from the mint, they're dealing directly. They, we call those wholesale companies. And we, when we're dealing with wholesale companies, there's things that we need to ask. You know, Is the product in stock? Is it authentic? What's their return policy? Is there a minimum order? What's the cost, shipping and handling, delivery date, and do they have a buyback price? Or is it uh, uh, just, whoops, sorry. Um, is it a no, no refund sale is what I was trying to say. Um, <clears throat> and so we know that 7K buys directly from the Mint. And that's why all these questions are answered by 7K because they, um, they always have the products in stock if they make it available for us to sell. And then you have the last uh, rung in the ladder, which is our local coin shops. This is the retail market for coins. And I would consider Stack and Sell a retail outlet as well. 
Um, and some of the things you need to know about dealing with a direct local coin shop or somebody that says they buy gold and silver. Um, I learned early on that, you know, buy, buying something or selling something to a local dealer is not best to do on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And the reason is, is because they have to estimate what spot price is going to be on Monday so that they get a fair price or they give a fair price. So the best days um, would, be, would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If you're going to work with a local coin shop uh, to buy or sell any precious metals. And then we have our auto savers. <clears throat> and again, like I said earlier, you know, these have material value in the auto saver, but they also have the graded value. They have the protected plastic case. They're part of a set that takes time and effort to assemble. And then they have, like I said, the material value. So when you think about the sets that we're building, understand that when you're done building that set, Somebody's like, yeah, I want that set, but I don't want to have to wait all that time to put it together. And so that's where, again, you know, as a seller, we would put a premium on top of the set that far exceeds the cost that we uh, incurred to assemble that set. So, um, I, that's Emily, thank you for inviting me to speak with your team. That's what I had to offer, but I'm here to answer any questions because I'm sure people will have some. <laughs> so let me know if there are any questions. Awesome. That was some really great information. I know earlier you had sort of like a little cheat sheet. <clears throat> Do you still have that cheat sheet uh, that you used on? Um, it's buried somewhere. <laughs> but it's kind of great to see, you know, kind of like a little summary like that. I, yeah. Although I loved the the, pre, the presentation um, uh, way of of how you did that. So I covered all the information that was in the other one. I just prettied it up for you. You you sure did. You sure did. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of I like the way that it was bullet pointed as well. Um, is that is that a document that we would be able to have available for for people to have to to kind of read over and refresh their memory with? Um, we'll talk afterwards. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Now, guys. This is a great time because they know a lot of people have questions on spot price and why do we pay so much on, you know, the MS 70s and, you know, why is it that, you know, we're paying all this money for a silver eagle and a gold eagle versus just regular silver or MS 70s. And so um, for those of you, especially who are new, um, they, I, I like to say there are no real dumb questions, right? But this is a really great time and a safe space for us to be able to ask those questions. Um, you know, I am not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be the first to tell you that I am not a gold and silver expert. I know enough to be able to know how some of these things work, but we've got Ben. So Ben is here to be able to answer those questions. If you want to, you know, um, open up your cameras or just unmute either way. I know we've got some people that are new that might have some questions. Um, I know we've got, like, I'm looking at some of these faces here and some people have just been recent to 7K medals and they've just recently joined so I know some of the, them might have some questions. If you want to unmute you, I'm going to go ahead and um, allow the the participants now to kind of unmute on their own. I blocked it off just so that we wouldn't get interruption while he was talking, but it is now um, uh, it is now enabled, so you can go ahead and unmute if you want to speak or share or raise your hand, and I'll mute you. We have a really shy group. Can I answer everybody's Tammy. questions? There's Tammy right there. Yes, Tammy. Hi, Ben. Thank you very much. That was so awesome. I forget how many times, about how many times did you say that there's a premium that's attached to it? Was it so like I, about six times? I, I calculated that earlier. It's actually, I, I have five premiums in the presentation. And I did a quick calculation before the call, and it worked out that each of those five people make about $4.20 per ounce. 
So when we think about people putting like 15, 20, $40 on top of an ounce, it's like, no, when you divide up all the people that their hands are getting involved, it's, it's $4 and 20 cents per, per hand in the pie. Right. And I think that's some, some of the things that people forget is that there is not just, oh, you know, here's the raw material, right? There's labor involved. There's all these other hands. There's employees. There are actually people putting this thing together. People that have to get paid to grade them, look at them, slab them, right? Create. Yeah. And, and like you said, I think you said this one at one point to actually be able to, um, what do you call that? Like, I, I forget what the word was to stamp it, but. Um, press. The press. I the mean. Minting press, yeah. The minting press. It only allows you to make so many before you have to, to re remove that and put a new one on. Right. So that's right. cost and expense as well. Yes. That people yeah, don't the, realize, right? Well, when they design the dyes, then they manufacture many of them and then they just rotate them out. To, you know, you think about it, that's 2,000, two tons of pressure coming down on that silver blank. So next time you pick up a gold or silver eagle, look at the detail in there. And that gold or silver is pushing back against the die, and the die just kind of wears out. Now, it explain, explain what a die is, because some people might not know what a die is, actually. So a die consists of two pieces that goes into the press. There's the, the, the heads and tails, right? And so the blank gets rolled onto the tails, and then the head comes and smashes it so that it leaves the impression in the metal. The edges are uh, applied to the round before the coin is minted. So you'll notice a little edge on the uh, fins that are on the side. Um, so you can see where the die actually presses. Um, it's, it's the inside the ridge. Right. So, yeah. And then, and so here's another question for you. That's why if you look at some of the graded coins, right? The MS-70s, <clears throat> they, they grade them, right? So MS stands for mint state. 70 is the highest grade that you can get. And then it starts to go 69 and lower because it just depends on the impact and you know what it comes out to, right? And so they the take a look at those coins. If they right? find defects, whoops. If they find defects, it lowers the value. Correct. So maybe it didn't press correctly. Maybe they didn't change it out, you know, early enough. And so the die might have, you know, kind of ran out of steam or sort of, say, <laughs> right. I don't know how to, to say that. And then the die becomes, you know, it creates that more imperfect coin. So now right. from having that be an MS-70 graded coin, it could be a 69 or 68 or 67 and depends how, you know, how long they use that, that die for, right? And decide yeah. to continue. Emily makes a really good point. Um, you know, on the back of our cards, uh, if you have one, you know, it says how many of these coins were minted. But what, what you're not reading there is how many of those coins were actually MS-70s. And it's about 15% that make it an MS-70. So, so that's, that's a really great point. So let's say, for example, Let's say on the back of a card, like this one here shows that there are, um, this is a real heroes three ounce coin, okay? Now this coin says that there are 750 minted. Oh, you got that one. <laughs> I love it. There's 700, I get so excited with these collectibles. I don't know, I'm sorry. But there's 750 minted in the world. So explain the 700 minted in the world versus how many are probably, right? The percentage going to be the the higher MS seventy um, minted type coin. So, can you explain that to our our group here? Yeah. So, out of that, how many was it again? So, this particular one was seven hundred and fifty for the Real Hero Special Edition. Yeah. So about forces. 100. And, so about a hundred and twelve of them are probably an MS seventy. So out of 750 that are minted, meaning they were pressed, right? Yep. Um, only 170 of them might be around, not exactly, but about 170 of them will 112. be- 112. Uh, 112, sorry, would be minted yep. uh, MS, or would be graded as an MS-70. 
right. then the rest of them would be, you know, a 69 or, or lower, depending on how many of those 750 minted, right, were, uh, were uh, not with, uh, with more imperfections, I guess is the word to say, right? Right. Okay. So I, I get I get really tongue twisted with some of the terminology because I'm still really new to all of this. I mean, I understand the concepts, but I'm still learning the language of of what we use. So um, Julie, it's, yes. It's interesting sorry. because I've been a small scale prospector for like 30 years. And when I joined 7K, my eyes were opened because there was so much more to learn from a bullion and collectible perspective that even being in the industry for 30 years, there's there's always more to learn. I'll leave you a little tidbit here. Do you know why there's a ridged edge on the coins? Why is there a ridged edge on the coins? So that nobody scrapes it and takes a little bit off the edge. Interesting. That was a protection mechanism so that they would know that their coins were not being uh, defrauded. Right, right. That way people know that that is a one ounce versus a shaved yep. one ounce coin. <laughs> exactly. If you think about it, you don't need much from a lot of coins to make a pile of gold. Right. You just like nick off a little bit here or there, right? And exactly. and so that's interesting because it is a security mechanism, right? It protects the coin and the integrity of the ounce. So yes. thank you. Good point to that, Ben. Julie, go ahead. Unmute. Uh, yeah, so the between the 70 and the 69, how how much does that affect the price as it goes down? Does that make sense? It, it can affect it quite a bit, but I've seen ones where it didn't affect it hardly at all. And again, if 15% are making it to MS70, there's probably another 10% that make it to an MS69. And I've seen 65, 62s. I mean, we've seen Morgans come through the sound money, uh, the stack and sell that were, you know, MS62. So, you know, they're, they're still valuable. Again, it's it's a combination of things. It's, it's the rarity, it's the story, it's the art, it's the collectability, it's the desire for the set. I mean, there's all kinds of things that work into that. And, you know, we, we're learning all the time that when you only have a very limited supply of something and all the MS-70s are gone, then people are going to look for an MS-69 to complete their set. Yeah. I remember I asked Miles the question, what's the difference between an MS-69 and an MS-70? And he just gave a really simple answer. He's like one point. And <laughs> what I got from that is that it's one point, meaning, um, Yes, the MS-70s are great, but as Ben, to, to Ben's um, comment, is that even a 69 is valuable depending on what the person wants to do with their collection and their set. Because think about this, like let's say we had a whole collection of stuff and they were all MS-70s, but let, let's say, for example, the mandala coins, right? We're, we're now collecting the mandalas, but what if and this is just a what if, because I think everything that's come out with the mandalas were 70s. But what if uh, somehow all the 70s were gone? You couldn't find a 70. But to complete your set, there's a 69. Would that make that less valuable to complete your set? Not necessarily, right? No. I mean, because at that point, you have a complete set. You have one coin that you may need to discount. But you don't sell a set as individuals. You sell it as a whole. Mm -hmm. And you put the price tag on the whole, and then they have to decide if that's worth investing into. Now you've been now you've been buying gold and silver for a while, or you've been in the silver and gold industry for a while, right? And before seven yeah. K metals, um, may, and correct me if I'm wrong, because this is just really an assumption. You were probably more focused on the bullion versus the collectibles, correct? Correct. And so now how do you feel about collectibles now that you've been with the company and understanding a little bit more, you know, prior to the company with the bullions, because bullions are great, right? Like we need bullion to protect, to be able to, you know, create that wealth. I mean, it's certainly important. I would never discourage people from not collecting bullion, but why do you feel now 
is the importance of having the collectible piece versus just bullion? Um, I think that we're seeing, you know, like in the art world, you know, a lot of people are going to auctions and they're, you know, bidding on art to put their money into something else that holds value. And this is what we have with our collectible coins is art and something that holds value. And, you know, all of us get to watch on Stack and Sell it what the market prices are. And we get to see what our return on the investment is, you know, should we decide to sell. So, you know, right. I mean, it's, it's definitely, you know, something that's, uh, you can monitor it. Um, and, and it just really no effort to buy or sell on that platform. I, uh, and the reason I asked you that question is because I noticed you, you pulled out your special forces coins. So I knew you started getting into the collectibles, right? <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't have bought a three ounce coin, right? Mm -hmm. And paid a premium price for a collectible if you only truly believed in bullion. Right. Well, I had to because the firemen and the pilot were getting lonely. <laughs> that's awesome. You got the set. Dang. <laughs> Um, Again, you know, that's where the value comes in. It's it's owning the set. Owning the sets. So, I mean, okay, so let's talk about the sets for a second and individuals. Let's just say, for example, um, there's a lot of people that missed coin drops, right? They're like, not everybody can get the whole set of the mandalas. And they're right. like, and they get really frustrated, right? So now, what do you do if you don't have the whole set? Like, are you just disappointed that you don't get the whole set? What what happens no, to the individual? Absolutely not. Points? Okay. Because somebody's willing to start that set at any time, and they they will scour the internet for the pieces that they need to complete a set. <clears throat> now, if you think about it, we have first rate of refusal with the coin drops if we're lucky, right? So, I mean, or the auto savers, it's a, it's a definite. So, if I wanted to create a set of Roman coins today from Julius Caesar time, how long and how hard do I have to work to put that set together? Well, five years from now, new members in 7K are going to work that hard to put the original animal series set together or the Roman set or the mandala series. They if they get their heart attached to it, they will put the time and effort in to assemble that collection. And it's just a matter of meeting somebody's price. Yeah. And, and again, you know, the value of something is really a perception, right? It's a perceived yeah. value. So some people might be into Spider-Man because, you know, we use that example of the Spider-Man comic book that's, you know, in our presentation. But some people don't like the Spider-Man, but they might like Michael Jordan or they might like right? Sha right. Shaquille O'Neal. Um, or, you know, I, I'll give you a, a funny example. When I first got started, they just started the Roman series, like literally just started. It came in at the perfect time. And I was like, I need that set. <laughs> I want that collection. And the first coin we had, the Julius Caesar, I was on the coin drop and I got it, right? And then the next one, I think, was the Brutus coin. And I thought, right. guaranteed, I'm going to get this because I'm always one of those people that I'm very optimistic. <laughs> and so, but this time, and usually on coin drops, guys, this is how seriously I take my coin drops. Usually on coin drops, when we're getting on, I am at home with fast internet. My computer is on. I try not to travel, meaning I try not to be like away from my computer at my house um, unless I, I don't have control over it. Well, I made one mistake this one day. It was going to be the Brutus coin drop. Someone somehow convinced me that uh, we were going to go somewhere that day. I forget. And I could have easily just postponed it and said, you know what? Let's just go a little bit later after the coin drop. And I was like, no, no, no. I can do it in my car. I can do it in the car. So we're in the parking lot, right? I've got my computer up. I've got my phone linked in to my, to my, uh, my laptop. And, and I'm waiting for the coin drop. And guys, I didn't get the Brutus coin and I was livid. I was so pissed, <laughs> so pissed. You have no idea. And my daughter was in the car with me and she's like, mom, calm down. It's just a coin. I'm like, it's not just a coin. <laughs> it was, it's not just a coin. But I, I was able to find a Brutus. I found, there I was like, I, right. I found a Brutus. I bought the Brutus. 
and then I was able to to continue with the collection. But guys, that is probably one of the collections that I will probably not release for a really, 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 really long time, right? And I'll probably hold on to that for someone who's really into that that era, right? Yeah. And, and we've already heard stories where people have seen that set and lost their mind. Right. Person could name any price they wanted. That person would have written the check on the spot. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. So and again, to, it's yeah. people literally fall in love with these these collections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They understand. And not only that, it's silver and gold. Yeah. And it's real money. It's not a toy. It's not a card. It's not a right. It's it's not a stamp. You know, right. um, it's not a pair of shoe that someone wore. <laughs> Yeah, these collections are the thing, you know, the, what do you get somebody that has everything? Yeah. Well, you know what? You hand them a set of coins that they can look at and hold and, and cherish. And it's like, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal, especially for people who are really wealthy or people who, like you said, who already pretty much have everything. Exactly. These are like real cool, rare collectible coins. Because even like the Roman series, I don't know how many of those particular coins are available, right? Kevin, you want to share your story? I see you made a comment in there. You can unmute and share if you want. I was just reading that. <laughs> hey, what's up, Emily? What's yeah, up, Kevin? I, I, hey, I'm good. I just saw that uh, you sent me that text, and I just had to jump on because, you know, when I've got Friday nights, I don't have to work in the morning, you know, unless I want to. But the thing is, I, I pretty, pretty much uh, had the same thing happen to me because I, I literally went crazy when I missed one of the coins. I, you know, you know how you get when it says sold out <laughs> and you're sitting there and you're just hitting the button, hitting the button, hitting the button, and you're just hoping somebody puts it back, you know, but I fortunately uh, was able to get on a stack and sale and found that Brutus coin. And that, it's ironic that it was the same coin that you, you know, missed out on too, but I got all of the 12, uh, you know, Roman series coins because of that one incident. I was so, so nervous that I would not, you know, complete that set. And the fact yeah. that I got it, I was, I was literally, you know, livid with excitement when it came down to, you know, getting it because I just, you know, every, every, every coin set that I get that I complete, I'm always excited about, you know, but when I do miss one, I, and I had no idea, you know, to tell you the truth, I had no idea that there was such a demand for the coins out there in the open market as they are right now. So it's just exciting and I love it. Awesome. Thanks for how many people, how many people have clicked the sold out button for 30 minutes? <laughs> because we know that the last minute somebody could put it back and it's like it's there for a split second. I, so I have know. to tell you, I did something really dumb. You guys, I had uh, tried to jump on a coin drop and I got it in my bag. So the, for those of you who know, it's sitting oh. in your bag. And I went to open up the bag to go look because, you know, we want to make sure it's there. And um, instead of hitting the close button, I hit the, the delete and I released the coin back <laughs> to the universe. So someone else got lucky and get that coin. But guys, I called, I called, I called Blake. I'm like, Blake, you're not going to believe this. I have done a thousand million coin drops. And today I clicked the X instead of the close and my coin got, somebody else got blessed with the coin I was gonna buy. <laughs> and so actually for you guys who are new, we now have a button that shows the little trash can instead of the X because of the phone call I made because I was so pissed that I let go of a coin. I was like, Blake, this is not right. And then the funny thing is, um, somebody else had called Blake about the same issue. They did the same thing. And then for those of you who know Mr. Ron Austin, while I was on the phone with Blake, Ron was calling Blake and Blake goes, am I going to hang up? I got Ron Austin. I goes, you better take that call. He probably didn't get a coin. <laughs> and so sure enough, <laughs> Ron did the same thing. Ron clicked the X to, instead of exiting out, he released the coin. So there were a few of us that did that. And so now you guys, when on the coin drop, you'll see a little trash can. So you don't make the mistake that I did and release the coin to the universe and give it back to other people. <laughs> it, it happens. Oh, I was pissed. All right, guys. Anybody else got questions or comments? I know Layla is on here. Layla's also a gold associate in our organization here. 
Um, I know she's at work, so I don't know if she can unmute, but anything you want to uh, share? Because Layla was actually on that morning that you were um, sharing your sheet, Ben. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Layla. I am actually driving, but I'm done work. I, I got to get to the bank before they close. But um, yeah, very great information. I appreciate you, you know, breaking it down like you did. Um, I missed the beginning here, but I know that Emily's streaming it on on her page, so that'll that'll be good a good go back to go watch because it's great valuable information. Sure. But yeah, we I, we're learning a lot. We're still learning. <laughs> yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. And and then, and then I want to rub it into Emily. I got the two ounce liberty to complete my death. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one missing coin I have to complete the <laughs> Liberty set. I'm so mad. <laughs> so if anybody's trying to sell a two ounce Liberty coin, let me know. <laughs> but that's a good point, though, that he makes about um, trying to complete a set. And if you can't get the 70, you will get the 69. And, you know, because the, the animal series was already started when we got started. Mm -hmm. And we could not get the Appaloosa and the... Montana. Well, I ended up getting the Montana. Um, I, I, I forgot how I got it, but I got the Montana. I bought it from someone. And the Appaloosa, I, I ended up, I was so excited. I got it. I, I bought it off stack and sell. Super excited, right? Didn't even realize it was a 69 at the time. But but I still have it. I have the 69. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> Let me know it's if you want to sell it. Yeah, even that, I'm not, I'm not selling it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyone's got questions. I know we got some new people. We got Shanna on here. I know she's fairly new to the coin space, right? Sadie. Also, Des. Des is new. Um, any questions, you guys? This is a great, great time to ask while you've got the experts and the professionals on here. So I see some people mentioning that they've missed some coins. Remember, Stack and Sell is not the only place you can find our coins. You've got, you got the Facebook official page group that's out there and you're, you'd be surprised. You, <laughs> honestly, if you're in a town with multiple members, there are people that are taking their coins and selling them to the coin shop for spot price. And they're just, they're, they're not holding on to them. So <clears throat> you can start searching local coin shops around the US because these coins are winding up on the shelf at the coin shops. Yeah so crazy and and just reach out you know like uh like he said i remember one time i wanted a specific coin and i think i just put a shout out like on um social media i'm like hey anybody got like this coin and i had like a few people message me so you know but now i got a little bit more 7k friends than i did when i first started <laughs> when i first started i was like hello hello <laughs> anybody there hey emily that's so that's so true though not just stack and tell me stack and tell is great you guys i bought um, a coin off of that that I was missing and wanted to get. It was part of the Mandala series, and now I missed the next, last three. I'll probably end up buying it again. But um, it's so true. It's creating the relationship with other 7K members. And for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, a, a gentleman and I had swapped coins, and he paid me a little extra. It was, it was for a Roman coin that I had an extra one last year. And we met at the conference. And he reached out to me saying, hey, are you still looking for that two ounce liberty? And I said, yes, I am. Ah. He was a pinch. He needed money. Um, I still, well, I got it for a good price. I mean, they're selling for like fifteen or $1,600 on second sell. And um, he let it go for, for $1,000 to me. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So you can negotiate with other people. You're going to find, make friends, yeah. man. Make friends, especially for the people who really participate in those coin drops. I tell you, yeah. make friends because they can they can cut you deal outside of stack and sell. And I hate to say this because we really want to use stack and sell, but but there are opportunities out there. Yeah, um, and Shanna, don't forget, yeah, it, it, you can do swaps too. You know, yeah, you can swap. They may be completing a different set than you, and you're both sitting there holding the coin of the other player. Yep, I had somebody tell me, "Hey, I'm I'm actually not really you know doing this particular collection." But I got the coin just by chance. I just thought I would try and I got it. Do you want it? I'm like, heck yeah, I'll buy it from you. So totally, totally true. Um, Shanna, Shanna's new to our company. Um, why don't you go ahead and share? I think you have a question. Or, or hi. Comment. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for the information. I was just wondering if you go to a co local coin shop here in Hawaii, are you able to like um, 
ask them to bring down the price? Are you able to negotiate? Because I feel like when I walk in there, like that's just set and you can't talk anything about it. So then I get scared and I just, I don't even question what's going on in the shop, right? And he could have, you know, he writes on the coins, like this is the MS-70, he's yeah. writing it himself, right? But there's no real bar proof or anything. So you kind of, like I said, it's hard to talk to the coin dealers here in Hawaii. So I was just wondering, is it possible that you do that or is that rude? Um, it's not rude, but I can tell you right now, they d usually don't dicker too much. <clears throat> they have a set margin that they have to make. And you can usually call the coin shop and say, what's your premium? And they will tell you that it doesn't matter what spot price is. We sell it for, you know, $1.75 above spot, no matter what it is on what day. Or we buy it for 50 cents above spot anytime, any day. So then what I do is I calculate that for multiple coin shops in the area to figure out who's giving the best premiums. Some might give you a good premium on the buy. Some people might give you a good premium on the sell, but you're trying to find that one company where you get a good premium, whether you buy or sell, so you can do business with them all the time. Thank you, that answered my question. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't think they, they don't normally change their premium because they wanna be known for that premium. And the only thing that really affects that is the building their rent, their expenses. Overhead, yeah. Improving yeah, it, it can okay. change over time, but mm -hmm. it's usually pretty fixed. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great no. question, Shanna. Thank you. Adizna, I think you are unmuted. Oh. I didn't have a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw TW's on here. Hi, TW. Did you wanna, um, did you have a question or it's, it's great to see you on here today? If not, if no more questions, we're gonna let Mr. Ben Russ go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it there now for you? Uh, 10.44. 10.44, so thank East you Coast. so much. East Coast time. Thank you so much. Uh, we, Absolutely. You know, we are so blessed to have so many people at our disposal to be able to ask like some really great questions and share that knowledge. But the things that you just shared today, even just the basics of like, you know, how this, this, the, uh, the system works, right? From the time you grab it from the core of the earth and, you know, how it becomes an MS-70 coin and just that conversation alone, I think was totally worth the education and having you on here, uh, sir. So thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you and thank you for answering all of our questions. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. And let me know if I can ever return the favor. Um, okay. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Right. Okay, I'm Thanks, you. Everybody. Good night. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank